What is up my peeps? Joshua Smith here at GSD Mode Studios, where every week I share new top real estate agent and entrepreneur interviews, along with tips that I'm personally doing inside my business that have allowed me to become one of the top real estate agents and team leaders on the planet. Check us out at gsdmode.com where you can see more free, great content, tips, interviews, resources, trainings, and more that will help you massively grow your real estate business. Also, make sure to check out my personal mentorship coaching program at 90daymastery.com. This is for those of you wanting to create a truly successful real estate business that pays you the money you want as well as gives you the time and freedom to live a life worth living. This is hands down the best, most effective, and most affordable real estate coaching program that exists out there. Thank you so much for all of your support. Now, let's dive on in to today's content. What is up, my peeps? Joshua Smith here with another GSD Mode podcast, where every single week I interview top entrepreneurs, top real estate professionals, and stripped up badasses that they're dominating their space. They're people choosing to not live a life of mediocrity, but instead to go out there and create big, amazing, epic lives for themselves, their families, as well as have a big impact on others. And today, you guys, we got two special, amazing, badass rock star guests on the show. So our guests today, you guys, um, have had over 40 years of real estate experience, and check this out, more than 68,000 home sales across the country during that 40 years of experience. So these guys know about real estate, um, have, have authored multiple books, and now have created and run a company called Brandface, which specializes in helping realtors as well as other business owners building their brand so they can go out there and attract more clients. And this is really more important than, than ever because of the digital marketing and the busyness of the world, so crucial to get your brand right. And unfortunately, a lot of people don't know what that truly means. So we're going to go deep in that today. So really stoked and honored to have our guests on the show, Tanya Eberhardt and Michael Carr. Welcome to the show. Hey, thank you, Joshua. We are so excited. Very yeah. happy to be here. Yeah, me as well, man. I, I you know, kids are doing so many big things and have done so many big things. And yeah, I'm so excited to have you on and, and pick your brain and our brains and, and uh, learn from you on a personal level as well as be able to feed just some great knowledge to impact our, our listeners. You know, I am curious though, um, you know, with, with, with brand facing this new venture, you know, cause you guys have had so much success with, you know, selling your 70,000 homes and, and everything in the real estate space. Like how did this come about in the first place? Like what, how'd the light bulb go off and how'd you make that transition and know that this was the right pivot for you? Okay, so, so let me kind of set the record straight at first. I'm not a real estate agent. He is, but he actually has done at this point in time well, almost seventy-four thousand transactions uh, as a uh, as a as a broker. But I have just done the personal branding side of things. So how we came together, it actually began a long time ago. I was selling vacuum cleaners door to door, and I know you'll appreciate this, Joshua. <laughs> so I was selling vacuum cleaners to pay my way through college, and I um, I noticed that that um, I needed to come up with a great story to get in the door. And so that was really my first taste of personal branding. One day I interviewed or I sold a vacuum cleaner to a radio station engineer who suggested that I uh, apply for a job in radio. And I was in media sales then the next almost two decades after that. And the first thing I noticed when I got into radio was that business owners who were the voice of their business and the face of their business in the community were almost like local rock stars. And so I began to help them pull their personal brand more into their marketing and their advertising. And that has been a common thread through everything I have done through almost three decades. So that was where personal branding became really important to me and helped me understand not only how it helps you stand out as an individual, but how it helps grow your business. And so six years ago, I came up with the concept of brand face and decided to start to write the first book. And that's when I met 
this gentleman and I'll let him take it from here. I came from a total different place. Um, I, I, we actually were raised uh, 45 minutes away from each other in North Georgia, but didn't know each other until six years ago. Um, I started off as an auctioneer by trade in the automobile industry, and my mentor in that industry said, hey, get your real estate license. You can make a little extra money on the side, selling a farm sale, something like that. And I did that. That's exactly what I did uh, from 1994 to 2006. In 2000, I did open up my own brokerage. I wanted some autonomy, but I still only used that brokerage license to buy my own portfolio, to buy my own rental property, and that sort of thing. And then when we got to 2000, 2006, everybody knows what began to happen 2007 and 8 you know I get a phone call I leave an auction in Charlotte I get a phone call from a company out of California they say we need to broker a big deal in Georgia are you interested I said I can one up you I'm an auctioneer also and I've got 15 years worth of experience auctioning property off and they're like they went crazy over it and we got together we made a meeting we auctioned off four, uh, 300 properties that one time in, in Atlanta we also had something here that would work we collaborated together started getting the licenses uh, and we ended up with what became the Bear Stearns residential portfolio and uh, next thing you know I've got an office in Irvine California an office in Seattle Washington licensed in 30 states as a broker and uh, we're flying around all over crazy just selling it trying to get ahead of the game and uh, but I knew I was working myself out of a job right so what an auctioneer is always doing and thank goodness because we wanted those ugly days over and let real estate come back what real estate is supposed to be the, the best investment that you can make in, in America in the world uh, especially in America and uh, and so I knew I needed to revamp something there you know and I was tired of traveling and I said well I'm in this killer little small town and you know I just over a brokerage and I hired I did that and I hired a couple of agents and one of the agents happened uh, to be a lady named is Carolyn and she said look I'll come on board with you but you got to do something about this marketing it's terrible it's that this market you don't it's non-existent it's terrible and she said and just so happens my niece is an expert at it and she's been expecting your call and expecting your call and she she played both ends against the middle with us for about six months and finally she called me and said i don't know if i'm supposed to be calling you or you're supposed to be calling me but i'm calling you here's what my company does and i and josh i was so mean to her i was like uh, look, I've had five others just like you, and I don't need another. I mean, I had the promises. I had all the Facebook likes people and, you know, all this kind of stuff, and everybody was a guru and whatnot, you know, so I sort of hurt her feelings right off the bat. Persistent <laughs> as she was, she would not let up, and she said, I know what's best for you, and she did, and I've done everything she's told me to since, and that is the real secret to my success. Yep, love it. So so a follow-up question, though, uh, Michael, when just – when you were building the the auction company, when when the market crashed during that time, you know, because you, you you knew what was to come, where all this was going to end. But at you, so you're having to scale something that you knew was going to implode at some point. Like mm -hmm. like how how do you manage that when you have to open these offices and and scale something, but you got to be very careful because you're so vulnerable, knowing that that's you know, something that that's going to go away. So somebody that maybe is in that point, or really, I think it's almost how all entrepreneurs should really be operating because you don't want to get stuck in like a Walmart situation yeah. where you have all these warehouses that, you know, Amazon's going to put you out of business. And what do you do with them? You know, right? Mm hmm. Yeah, the, the scaling is something that affects every level of that. Now, first off, my collaboration with, was with companies much bigger, right? And we were selling for companies even bigger than them. So a lot of that impetus fell upon them. The planning on my side was a lot more street level. Obviously, number one, I had my own portfolio I had to protect. And, you know, I've been building a portfolio of real estate rental property for 15 years. And, you know, I stood no different than everybody else, the chance of losing that, you know, because we bought it this price. And then, you know, now everything's fixing the tank and y'all, we all know what we lived through to be able to wait on that. Uh, but scaling that never ends, right? It never ends on the front side and it never ends on the back side. It's just as dangerous on the back side, which I think is the point you're going at, as it was on, you know, taking a gamble on the front end. Um, but, you know, it's, it's all about managing uh, expenses. That's really what it all boils down to. Like business is all a numbers game. And, and you know, it is a leap of faith. Um, I tend to be on the conservative side. So if there was a situation where we thought we needed to open up three offices, we only opened up one, 
We satellited to other, you know what I mean? Like we were very smart about um, using a space to work style offices that we needed, things like that, that gave us the exposure that we needed or like in states, like in the state of Washington where you have to have a physical location for all your records and stuff like that. It's just a numbers game. It was the back end that surprised me, honestly. And, um, and I learned a lot of valuable lessons. Um, I worked my tail end off on the climb and I worked twice as hard on the maintain on the backside. I really yeah. did because I had to build this brokerage up to maintain a lot of those expenses that I had already bit off. You know what I mean? And, it, and it, we, I was lucky enough to like see the opportunity because I had a rental portfolio that I was watching every day and I'm watching the street you know, values and saying, okay, when's my portfolio going to come back? And I was weighing that out with buying new portfolios to manage that out as best I could. So I had a good, you know, a good average out of all the properties and, uh, and then, and then tried to build that brokerage as fast as possible. And that's really where brand face like helped. And I think I probably would have failed on the back end had it not been for Brandface and what it taught me because the brokerage side was really new territory for me. I'd never really sought out agents and, you know, uh, brokerage, uh, arm's length brokerages. I had just had a broker's license because I didn't want somebody else telling me I couldn't call a sale or contract with somebody, you know. And so I had to start that from scratch to try to catch back up with what I knew was coming down. Does that make sense? Yep. And, uh, and I nearly missed it. I'm, I'm here to say like anybody that, you know, Larry King uh, at one time, he's, he said, uh, I heard him say, you know, if anybody tells you the secret of their success and they don't use the word luck, they're lying. You know, and I think any of us, I think any of us that put ourselves out there and just go, you know, full bore towards what we're going for, we know what that feels like. There's been times where the manna fell from heaven, hallelujah, and we, we were able and smart enough to be in a position to pick it up and run with it. Yeah, love it. Love it. Awesome stuff. So then, you know, Tanya, uh, when you first reached out to, to Michael and you guys had the conversation because he had so many bad experiences before meeting you and working with you, and he was, you know, obviously judging you on that those negative experiences and you were having to stay persistent because you knew you had a product that could solve his problem. But that's, that's one of the big challenges anymore is, is it's not just selling people on you or your services. It's, it's also selling them on all the punch in the guts they've already experienced. And, yeah. you know, j just from that personal experience, like, like how, how did you overcome that? Cause I, I, you know, Michael doesn't strike me as the kind of guy that's going to cave in easily. Oh no, he did it. He did it. And as a matter of fact, the day he told me, "Fine, I'm going to work with you," he, I, 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 I'd had just about as much as I could take of him. He was peppering <laughs> me with question after question, and I said, "Look, I've told you everything I can tell you. I've answered every question you put before me, and you're just going to have to trust me." And he said, "Okay, I will." And then he said, "I decided that two weeks ago. I was just going to give you a little more grief." So. <laughs> But it's not, it's not any different, Josh, than um, the, it's deja vu today, right? When we work with real estate agents today and we get them on the phone and they say, okay, what is this brand face thing? What do you guys do? And are you going to be like all the 10 more before you that promised all these things and didn't deliver, right? And so we go through that every single day in what we do and we have to unsell uh, somebody else's potential mistakes or perhaps maybe their own right? They're, they're the agent's own mistakes. Um, so w with Michael, I, w I was just, when I think when you know your worth, you know your value, and you know what you've got, is, what you're putting forth in front of them is is not necessarily the magic bullet, but without it, you're never going to succeed, right? And you're never really going to succeed to the level at which you know you could. And I am so confident in that. I think that does come across, but I'm also very honest with agents who will get on the phone with us today, and us on our team today, when we take the calls for people interested in what Brandface is all about. And they'll say, well, I have marketing doesn't work. All these coaches, all these platforms, that's a bunch of crap. People promise you things and they're not going to deliver. And I say to them, okay, look, you know, perhaps you're being a little hard on people because there's a lot of great coaches and trainers out there. There's also a lot of good marketing platforms and systems and tools out there. As long as your ideal customer is on the other end of that, it should produce a return on investment for you and a nice one. However, if you don't have yourself properly defined as different, 
and developed and your brand displayed correctly and consistently before you start to use that marketing platform or that tool or system the coach is teaching you to use, then you're just going to use that tool system or platform like everybody else. You're going to use the same scripts. You're going to use the same um, uh, email templates. You're going to use everything is going to be pretty much the same. If your message and your image isn't different from everybody else, then don't do it because you're, you're only gonna get the minimal amount of value out of that that you can possibly get. You'll get maximum value if you set yourself apart while using those same tools everybody else is using. Yeah, love it. Yeah, it comes down to, you know, there's no such thing as, as bad marketing, just bad strategy. And so many are yes. focused on the tactic and the medium, but they don't spend the time to apply effective strategy to it. Amen. And without effective strategy, you're never going to have success with it. And before, before we have you guys walk us through, you know, like the process that uh, a, a real estate agent would go through to really define this, because unfortunately it's something that's never talked about in our industry. Um, like, can you kind of just elaborate on, on, and maybe this goes to the impact that Michael saw when first working with you and the differences in his real estate company, but why is this so important today? Like why, why should a real estate agent be really focused on building their brand? Well, the, the, the first thing I want to say about it is uh, the, the, the biggest mistake that I see real estate agents making is it is very hard to calculate the cost of confusion. And there's a lot of confusion mm -hmm. in this industry because this is not a linear industry. I, when I when I talk to agents and they interview with my brokerage, you know, I, I the, if somebody sits down to me and say, "What are my hours going to be?" I instantly know they don't understand real estate, right? They don't. They don't have. They're not in the right frame of mind yet. Now they can get there, but they they're not there yet because it's this isn't this isn't the systems of McDonald's, right? Where we can sit down. There are systems inside the business itself, but it, it can be a very confusing business. And it's made worse by all of the marketing that are that they are attacked with every day. Like we are bombarded every day with the next magic thing. And, and a lot of us know that the real magic thing is, you know, your messaging and then how you put that out there. So I hope that doesn't cut you off, but I wanted to say that. No, I think perfect. that's a big thing uh, when in the industry is uh, the, just the cost of confusion. Yeah. Yeah. And, and a lot of times too, Josh, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll hear from agents who say, well, I lost a deal today to Colwell Banker or Keller Williams. And I say, no, you didn't. You did not lose a deal to, uh, to a, a brokerage brand or a logo. You lost a deal because you didn't show enough value in what you could bring to the table or either you weren't the right fit for them, which, which happens sometimes, right? But you did not build value in, enough in yourself because people don't do business with a logo, they do business with a person. Every single time it comes down to the person across from them. And that's why personal branding is so important. You gotta tell the right people what you need them to know and what is gonna be important to them and but to make them understand what's different about you and why you're perfect for them. Yeah, yeah. But, and when you look at the biggest companies that exist out there, so the most wealthiest company to ever exist in humanity, Apple, you know, right? With, right. with Steve Jobs. I mean, they all built a diehard, a diehard tribe. You know, they're very clear on who they were, who they impact. And, you know, when Steve Jobs passed away, I mean, you, I mean you've never seen people mourn and, and, you know, like even, so I mean, it was unbelievable, you know, just mind blowing. Um, uh, but that's what great companies do. And I, you know, I always tell real estate agents, I'm like, look, amateurs chase, professionals attract, you know, right? Like you can't build a professional okay. business by chasing business. You know, you know, you know, Apple doesn't have a bunch of cold callers, cold calling people trying to sell a Mac. They got lines of people waiting in tents, you know, camping out for two days for a new right. device, you know, right? Yes. Um, so, so, you know, with that, then like, what, where, where do we start? Because it is like you mentioned, it is such a unique thing where you've got to define you know, like my, the brand I might build might be different than, you know, what Michael might build in his brokerage, you know? Um, so where, where do you even begin to start? 
Uh, well, first of all, you nailed the first part. Everybody's so different because this is personal branding. You, there's no such thing as cookie cutter branding. You cannot cookie cut branding because it's personal. So we start with what we have, what we call a 3D approach. And we call it the 3D dominoes approach. And here's the reason why. If you think about when we were kids, we had this 52 card pickup game, right? I never understood that. I thought, why do I want to pick up somebody else's cards? I just like, I don't know. <laughs> but I never thought of that as a game. I thought that's a mistake. Somebody else pick it up. <laughs> I, but if you look at it like uh, what we want our marketing to be like is that lovely, you know, domino. What's that movie we, um, the movie? V for Dom Vendetta. V yeah. for Vendetta. Remember V for Vendetta? We lines up the dominoes and he tips one and this is beautiful or, or, you know, orchestral cascade and it's just all lays out the way it's supposed to. That's what marketing should be. So we call it the 3D dominoes approach, but it's define, develop, and display. And I'll, I'll, tell you what we do in the define phase. In the define phase, we look at a couple things. Number one, we want to look at who those ideal customers are, not for the purpose of boxing people in and saying you can only work with first time home buyers, right? It, we could be defining um, that ideal customer by somebody who's in the same life phase. We are somebody who's in a life phase that we've already gone through, so we understand what they need. Somebody who has certain personality personality characteristics, somebody who is seeking a certain type of property in a certain area, many different things can pull together to mean what an ideal customer should mean to you. So we, we use a criteria called the HEAP criteria, which we can talk about in a minute if you want, but we help people understand the formula for deciding on who their ideal customers are. If you think about it this way, how on earth do you know what to put in your marketing what message to put out there unless you first know who you're trying to attract with that message. It makes no sense. So we're just out there throwing out, hey, if you or someone you know would like to buy or sell a home, call me. Well, why? Why should I call you? So that's kind of where we start. Then we take a look at the individual in the defined phase. What is it about that individual that's very unique and very different? What do they bring to the table that's different from everybody else? Not better, but different because better is subjective different is inarguable. And so it could be something from their past that has nothing to do with real estate, but helps them in their real estate business, something that people would gravitate to and understand. It could be anything. So we take a look at those things and then based on those two things, we come up with what we call a brand identifier. You might call it a tagline or a slogan. We, we call it a brand identifier. And really your brand identifier should state who you are or what you do or stand for. And that's that marketing hook, that sexy marketing hook that just right off the bat op kicks open the door and says, hey, that looks pretty interesting. What does that mean? That's pretty cool. So you've got their attention and they kicked open the door so they come inside and see and hear more about the brand. So that's what we do in the define phase. And then when we get all that put together, then we move into the development phase. Yeah. And so it's the second part of the D dominoes, obviously. And then the development phase, we start looking, we start digging on the, on our, our clients. Right. And then and, and we start working with them. Like, what are your past experiences? And then we start building no different. The defined would be like the skeleton and then the develop would be the muscles, the skin, the flesh, and everything on top of that to develop who they really are. Right. We want to, we want to, uh, we start identifying and attracting that ideal customer. Right. And then we want to weave in the other elements of that like um, like uh, your elevator pitch and and uh, your bio is very important because we know from NAR statistics that people are going and checking out the agents and checking out them long before they ever call right we 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 known for many years two decades now since the internet has become really prevalent they're looking at the houses well they're also checking out who you are they're do they're going to your social media they're looking at that at uh, what your message is they might not even know they're looking for the message right but they're doing that sleuthing that online sleuthing to say, is this even somebody that I want to work with? And so in the development phase, we really get to know the client and then we, we take those attributes and we push them forward. Right. And so people can identify very clearly who they're going to be working with long before they ever pick up the phone. And the idea of it is, is that they have a really good general idea of that person long before they ever have any contact with them. 
Yeah. And so, and, and when we get all those puzzle pieces and parts together that are done in the development phase, the photos of the agent, the logo, the brand colors, the brand messaging, all those things, then we move into d display. And in display, we make sure the new brand is displayed correctly and consistently across all of their everyday marketing platforms. And what we mean by that is we'll take a look at their website, making sure that that brand is infused in the website. The moment somebody gets to that agent's website, they need to see who they are, what they stand for. Uh, we take a look at all their social channels, making sure they're all customized consistently with the new brand and then uh, their collateral materials, things like their business card, personalized note card, things like that. So no matter where they run across um, information or that brand for that agent, they see that consistent message and image. Now then, do you, do you and you talked about, uh, Tanya, when you first talk about your journey with selling the vacuums that you knew you had to have a story to get in the door and you know when these guys are saying all this like i'm thinking of like you know gsd mode podcast right and it wanted to be different stand out be unique originally i was going to call it like no you know keeping it real no smokes mirrors with joshua smith and you know just some boring <laughs> bullshit that I wouldn't get you know right and, and i was freaked out to do gsd mode because i'm like oh this is I mean, i'm interviewing professionals like they see shit, like they're gonna be offended, they're not gonna take it seriously. <laughs> but I was like, all right, screw it, I'll just give it a shot, you know, right? Um, but then, you know, I hit it with the story, you know, right? Talk about when my success journey started 14 years ago and it all started from me being massively depressed and, and suicidal and obese and, you know, losing 118 pounds or 100, over 100 pounds and, you know, going through my success journey of overcoming many things and that's what kind of how GSD was born. Um, you know, so when it comes to a story though, for, for a real estate agent that's identifying their ideal client, how important is it to have a story? And do you have to have a story? Cause like maybe if your niche is, okay, hey, I'm gonna go after divorce clients, you know, right? Those that are going through a divorce situation and maybe either you went through a divorce and knew how hard that time was or experienced that as a kid and your heart goes out to them and you just wanna serve and support them, you know, right? But what if you have like this ideal client that you just really connect with, but maybe you don't necessarily have you know, that story. I mean, can you just elaborate maybe on the importance of the story and how that fits in with the branding? Yeah, yeah. And you know, I'm so glad you asked this question because our we we believe very strongly in putting out authentic brands. We don't put out what we call cartoon brands. We look inside the individual and we believe that we don't make stars, we unveil them. So there's a star inside every person. We've got to figure out what that is. And that star starts with a story, right? So what you said is if you're going after divorced people, you most likely that's touched a nerve. That's a part of who you are. That's part something that happened to you, experience you went through, put you in that space where you feel you can really help people. And that's what it's all about. But even when people come into the program, and I can't even tell you how many times this happens, they get on the phone with me and they almost challenge us and say, there's really nothing super unique about me. I don't have a story, I'm pretty boring. I mean, good <laughs> luck if you can find a point of differentiation here, lady, right? And, and every time I say, don't you worry, we've got this. And we get it every single time because they don't even realize the tapestry that they're weaving throughout their lives to get to where they are this moment. It's, mm -hmm. you know, it's a, it's a, it's kind of a spiritual moment. It's a beautiful time. And I can tell you that 90, 8% of the people, when we get on a brand reveal, brand messaging reveal session with them, where we've written that brand messaging for them, taken all of their story, and kind of put it all together for them, 98% of people actually come to tears on that phone call. And it, move, it moves us to no end. Because that, for the first time, many of these people are actually hearing their story like they've never heard it before. They've never seen it. They've never felt it that way before. And that means a lot to us. And so the story is everything. It's everything. It's, it's crazy. Uh, Josh, they, they, like we've, we've had people go, that's me. And yeah. we're like, you gave us the information. <laughs> you know what I mean? We, <laughs> we didn't make it yeah, out. You filled out the form. I mean, yeah, you know, this is you, yeah. but they're like so taken aback because 
you know, like Tanya says, uh, and a friend of ours out of Canada had, had taught us this, you know, it's hard to see the label when you're inside the jar. And, and, and we're taught, we're as human beings, uh, you know, most of us, we, we're raised in, in families where, you know, humility is important, right? Now, people don't want to be out there and say, well, you know, it's going to look like it's all about me or, you know, look at me, look at me, look at me. And, and Brandface isn't any of that. Like, Brandface is really just, as she said, digging down deep inside and seeing, okay, what are those steps and all these different things that have led you, just like your story, to where you are and what made you want to start a podcast called Get Shit Done. You know what I mean? Like, and what would, what would challenge you in your life to do that? And a lot of people, they can't dig deep enough yet. And then the minute that we go into that and we show them who they are, and then they're, they're very surprised at, at, that this is who they are. And this is how everybody else sees them too. And the minute that you have that out, the attractor factor is a lot easier to find in your, in your niches, you know, because it's rare that you're going to, uh, that, that, that we have found, and, and we've got clients in 37 states and four provinces of Canada and the UK and New Zealand. So it's, and out of all those examples, it's very rare that we've ever found somebody that once their story was found, that their niche wasn't easy to find. Does that make sense? And so it's, it's not like we're going to have a brand where they, it's hard to find that identifier because there are just four or five major points as humans that make us all the same. We all have the same feelings, same fears, same relations, same joys, uh, you know, same desires, you know, they all are pretty equal despite the fact that our stories can be so different. Yeah. Love it. And then, um, so, so you've got the ideal client, right? Um, and then when you're identifying your ideal client, like a question I get a lot of times from real estate agents is, well, hey, I'm brand new to real estate. Like, I don't know who I connect with the best, who sends me the most repeat referral yeah. business, like those clients that are like friends, you know? Um, uh, what do you recommend to a client of yours that's brand new that hasn't been in real estate that may be having a difficult time identifying who their ideal client could or should be? Okay. It, well, that's exactly why we came up with what we call the HEAP criteria. It's okay. H E A P, as in heap of clients, heap of money, right? <laughs> so, so we it's an acronym, and and the H in it stands for help. So, first of all, who can you help? Who can you genuinely help? Is it the divorcees? You know, the divorcees? Is that who it is? Is it empty nesters because you've been through that? Is it aging seniors? Is it millennials because your kids are that age and you understand them and how they think and how they process things? How, who can you really help? What experience in, in your life have led you to who you can help? Mm -hmm. And the E is uh, enjoy. You want to work with somebody you enjoy working with, right? And we get a lot of kickback sometimes. People are like, okay, if I, if I get the ideal customer in the niche, am I going to limit myself? And, and the answer to that is no, because, you know, especially if you're young and you're kicking things off, you're going to take your leads as you can. You're going to be calling all the expired listings you can. You're going to be working the crap. You got your brand out there and stuff. But when you spend your money in marketing, you want it to be pointed, right? And the, uh, and the second part of the heap, uh, um, is the enjoy you want you want to be you want to work with people that you enjoy with so as you start to have your transactions that you go through you know go back and do an after action and say you know what I really love working with that with a starter family that was just looking for that first home or I really love working with those empty nesters it needs to be somebody that you enjoy and and when you put your marketing dollars out there you want to work with people that are fun to work with because you know if we if we enjoy what we do we never work a day in our life Yep. The A is people who appreciate you for what you bring to the table. A lot of agents say, my clients don't even respect me. Nobody respects me. They don't call me back. They don't do this. And it's like, well, maybe some of those could be the wrong fit or you haven't defined and developed and displayed that brand to really let that brand precede you and tell them why you're the professional that they should be working with. But you want to know that at the end of the day, you're appreciated. That's when you go home and you, it's like a job well done. Your life is more fulfilled that way. And only people who will, who will respect you are the ones who will, will appreciate what you bring to the table. That's really important. Yes. And the P, of course, is profitable. And, you know, you might be surprised at the people that we have to teach them that profit is not a bad word. That is not a bad word. There's nothing wrong with being paid good for what you do. And, you know, you know, one of the richest businessmen that I've ever had the privilege of working with, he said, look, Michael, you don't have to be the cheapest. You can be the most expensive. Well, the one thing you can never be is not the best. You have 
have to be the best at it and you have to work that craft every day. But there is nothing wrong with looking for that ideal customer that you're profitable with. It has to be, uh, it, we, that's why we like that. You got to help, find people you can help, find people you enjoy working with, people that are going to appreciate you and, and profitable is, uh, is the best way to build your business. Whether you started with this transaction, it's your first or whether it's your thousandth. Yep. No, I love that. And, and you're so right. I mean, business exists to make a profit. You know, if we're not profit, like what's, what's the point in, but when you really start breaking that down and I haven't heard it broken down in this way, in this order with you guys' method with heap, you know, but it's like, cause I always identify my ideal client, you know, right. It, going through those again, who do I enjoy work with, who do I love working with, who appreciates me. And I always get asked like, why don't you, why don't you, work luxury josh like you got all these luxury areas in in your marketplace and i'm like almost every luxury deal i've done is they were just dicks to deal with you know right like they didn't appreciate me <laughs> not all cases i've, I've but actually I just, heard that you know lot. right so it was like hey man like who did i really really enjoy working with you know was your your you know you're just average you know working family out there that, that really appreciated you caring about them and putting their interests first and putting their needs before commissions. But then when I was thinking of, of profitability, I still wanted the, the luxury pay. So then I was able to identify, okay, well, I'm going to target second time move up buyers, right? But on the buy side, right? Because then if I get them on the buy side of the connection, but then they have a home to sell. So it's the same marketing cost, but two transactions, right? And, yeah. and but when you get this, this really forces you to get really methodical with your branding, you know, with your messaging, but also with your business overall strategy altogether. So, I mean, I, I love it. It's powerful stuff. Um, all right. So then you, you, you've got the brand then now that you've got, and, and I love that you talked about on all mediums, you know, right. I see so many real estate agents that it's like they're competing against their, them, their own selves. Yeah. You know, right. Like they'll have all their branding out there in the yard signs, but then they'll create a Facebook community page and be running ads on that, that's not competing against their own brand or just different yeah, things, yeah. you know, right? That is so cool. different. Yep. Yeah. Biggest mistake. Yeah. So then, then when you have that, um, when it comes to, cause you, you've, you've got the brand element and then you have marketing, right. And, and I mean, they all kind of intertwine together. Um, you know, but once you, once you have, we talked about with the brand and you've got your, you know, your story, your tagline there, um, and you've identified your ideal client, like what, what's the next step there when it comes to, I mean, is that then the marketing component? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's two things in, in our opinion, Josh, it's living and breathing that brand every single day and it's marketing that brand. Okay. We won't ever tell people, uh, it astonishes me sometimes that people think, well, I'm going to come in and build this brand and then I don't have to market. I don't have to spend any money. And we're thinking, what? Right. <laughs> we want you to be able to spend as much money as you can and get a much, much greater return because you're more defined that way. So think about it this way. Once you know those ideal customers and you've really kind of, you know, uh, created the snapshot of who they are and what sets you apart that's going to attract them to you, then you've kind of got the guardrails thrown up around your marketing. So you, for next thing you do is look at where are those people in that snapshot spending their time? What are they doing? What do they care about? Where else can I reach them? Um, and, and creating those things. So I'll give you an example here. Kathy White is uh, one of our agents. She's in Whistler, British Columbia, and her brand identifier is Lifestyle Locator. Now, the reason we gave her that brand identifier and she is Whistler's Lifestyle Locator is because Whistler is known for its ski resorts and um, Kathy lives that awesome lifestyle every day. So she works mostly with investors. Most of her clients were our second home buyers, investors, le what we call legacy home buyers. And the one thing that they have in common is every time they buy or sell, it is all about the lifestyle. So Kathy knows that she embodies that she's on the tourism board. She's a downhill skier. She's a cyclist. She is a pilot. She's a runner. And so she lives that lifestyle every day. Well, what's really cool about that when it came time to market is she's thinking out of the box. So she went to a company, a coffee company and a grocery delivery company that delivers groceries and stocks the refrigerator and the cupboards for or um, high, high dollar, you know, clients coming to uh, spend time in those very high dollar resorts areas. So she actually put her brand on their grocery delivery boxes. 
she put her logo and her information inside her information inside the boxes her logos on the boxes and i thought that was very very creative mm -hmm. because where are her clients new clients that are coming in sometimes a lot of them will come in and they'll rent a vacation home first and they'll get there and all of a sudden decide oh my gosh i have to live here we have to have a second home here and so it was very creative it was very reasonable expense wise and that's just one way that thinking now i know who my ideal customer are how am I going to reach them and that's an out-of-the-box way to do it mm -hmm. yeah yeah and then so I mean how, how do you go down that discovery process though of you know it's like entering the conversation taking place in their mind you know right already and, and yeah. you know sales is really pain and pleasure everybody's got a pain they want to get out of that pain to get to pleasure and you got to articulate that you're the guy to do that um, you know and maybe if you are the ideal client yourself, um, like you're your own ideal client, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, then maybe you already know what that is. But if you're not, how do, how do you go down that discovery process to, to find out you know, like what their, what their pains would be and, and where to show up and what the messaging would be? Well, a lot of that I find is they already kind of know that through experience because the reason they know those people are their ideal customers that they've already done, they've already dealt with them in many ways. And, you know, whether that was in real estate or in some other part of their life before real estate, we have some, we have several agents in our program who were in the nursing field before they came into real estate. Some were in the military before they came into real estate. Some were in financial advisement. Some were mortgage brokers. Some, like from all it so they bring yeah the attorneys so they bring that experience with them into real estate so even if they haven't sold you know 50 homes to people they would call their ideal customers they've still dealt with them in some other manner of life and know what it's like dealing with them so most people once you walk them through that heap criteria there's they really do kind of find the way Mm -hmm. Most of the time. And if not, then we say, okay, what phase of life are you in? What phases of life have you gone through? Um, or do you have children who are millennials or who are getting their first home? Do you have parents who are aging and getting ready for assisted living? Who can you help? And that's really often where that HEAP criteria comes in just real fast. It, it, as soon as they go through that, I don't know anybody yet who has mm -hmm. not been able to figure it out. And we also recommend a primary and a secondary ideal customer because that primary could be the empty nesters the secondary could be their uh their adult children the influencers in their lives you know and those two are just marry very well and create this awesome synergy yep yep love it and then um it's like okay hey i can have this the best logo best tagline best story but obviously I got to take action and, and put content out there and, and make sure that my messaging is consistent and, you know, right. So, I mean, what do you recommend there? Like, what do you see the mistakes with maybe, maybe a real estate agent gets all the things that you said, right. But then they still don't succeed with it. Like, where do you see they go wrong once they're at this level with, with the heat? Well, you have to, uh, you have to apply it. That's the biggest thing. Like, you know, it, uh, you, the, we find the agents that are most successful are doers, right? We fact, we had a, a lady uh, say the other day, you know, uh, done is better than perfect. A lot of us have heard that before. It was a reminder to me. It'd been a long time and I went, Oh, that's it right there. Right? So the first thing you got to do is do it. You got to not be afraid to take that first step. I'm always amazed at how many agents are afraid to take the steps. Right. But once you get them moving a little bit and they're taking, taking the steps and they're putting themselves out there, then uh, consistency is the next thing that is so vitally important. And I can't, I can't stress it enough to my own agents and the agents that we have in our program, consistency, consistency. I hear all the time people are like, well, I sent out 10,000 postcards and nobody called me. You know, we teach them, look, you'd have been much better off to have sent a, a thousand people 10 postcards, right? You know, the, the, a, a mass marketing like that, uh, the really only reason you would ever do anything like that is to identify an area, like, and then and see where you can start to build in a much smaller smaller area of time. So I find that the biggest mistake that I see people making is not moving first and then not holding to the consistency. Uh, and if you would do that, you're going to reap the returns. Like 
it will you ha you have to put yourself out there and then you have to consistently stay in front of the people enough time that they start to recognize who you are and i think that a fundamental uh, mistake that a lot of agents make is farming much too big of an area much too big of an area yeah, you can start that way when you're young and new and whatnot, or, or you're taking out over an area, you know, Delta, if Delta wants to take over a new area, what do they do? They start running ads that they're going to be flying from Atlanta to Memphis for $89. And they lose money for six months on every flight that everybody pays $89. But after six months, they start creeping up those prices, right? And then all of a sudden, they're starting to build that market. Real estate should be no different. And it, it starts with doing it, to starting, it starts for consistent it, it furthers itself with the consistency of doing it and you need to do an area that is manageable for you to get known i want to add one thing to that too josh it's a phenomenon that we've seen which i, I i'm so happy about is that um they agents that have their brand all pulled together once they have everything together the pride that they feel and the confidence they feel in finally having all that together knowing what they stand for and just having that full clear picture and everything they're proud of at their fingertips that it changes them it's a game it changer we always like to say a great brand doesn't just change the way you see it it doesn't just change the way other people see you. It changes the way you see yourself mm -hmm. and they, and they work harder at it. They're do more. They actually get it out there more when they're more proud of what they are putting out there. And I think, yeah, I think it brings in focus. Like it really yeah. does. It bring, it gets rid of some of the shiny, 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 and it brings it into focus. Uh, so you can see some things a lot better. You can see the trees and not just the forest. Right? Yeah. Yeah, because then too, like once once you're very clear on that ideal client and, and, and your brand is, you know, helps identify that I mean, it all comes together. But then it's like, all right, well, where, where do these people do business? Where are their eyeballs at? You know, right? Like I know my ideal client because they're 28 to 42 years with young kids at home. Like you're not going to get them on a cold call. You're probably not going to even get them on a door knock, you know, right? Like you got to be social media, maybe an open, like you got to, you got to show up where they're at. So then it makes it very easy when you're thinking of, oh, should I try this? Well, is my ideal client there? You know, right? It's like if I'm selling Bibles, I'm not going to go to a strip club and try to sell Bibles. I'm going to go to <laughs> churches, you know, right? Like they it just eliminates it. that, you know, right? They don't need it, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, but, but it creates a lot of clarity, right? <laughs> so then, <laughs> so then from there, you know, right? Because you got, your, you got your ideal client and then you have the customer, right? And, and what I mean by that, and it, we uh, all marketers and gurus that we all you know learn from whatever might use different verbiage, but it's like the decision maker, right? So like with my ideal client, 20 to 42 year old married couples um, that have young kids at home, typically elementary school, second time move up buyers, um, and they're the 250 to 400,000 price point living in the suburbs. 90% um, of the household purse strings, including the decision to buy or sell, is the woman of the household, the wife, the mom, you know, right? So. It's like, okay, this is my ideal client, but all my marketing and messaging really needs to speak to her because like I can connect with the husband all day long, but if I don't connect with her, I'm not getting the business no matter what, you know, right? So how important then is it to kind of take it a step further when it comes to, again, because you know, when we think of marketing, you know, it's like marketing is everything that you're doing to get their contact information in your database. Then it's kind of, you know, sales and closing from there. Um, but you gotta, you gotta speak to the decision maker in a way. It's like, I always, you know, tell agents, it's like, look, um, I might have like a, a face cream, you know, right. Men's face cream, you know, right. For now I'm getting older. I've got to, you know, try to, try to reverse some of the, the, the damage of being a workaholic, you know, right. <laughs> However, I'm not buying that, even though it's, it's a, a product for a man and I'm their ideal client. The customer is my wife because she's the one that picks it out, buys it. And, you know, it's like, it, it, I don't know, 99% of men's grooming products are still marketed to the wives, you know, right? Not the man because they're the ones, you know, again, control 90% of the household purse strings. So how important is that element um, of, of really then getting clear of who the decision makers and speaking to that person? Okay, I, I got a great story for you here. And I'm pretty sure this was Brian, this, this was either Brian Tracy or Zig Ziglar. And, and, and forgive me, you know, for not knowing exactly which one it was, but it's an incredible story. And I want everybody to look it up so they give credence to the correct one. But he started out selling soaps, door to door, facial soaps, 
and he went door to door and got told no, no, no by women. Then there was a women's product. I, how, how about, would you like to buy some soap, ma'am? No, 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 a thousand no's in a row. One day he decided, you know what? I'm gonna go to the door and say, hey, ma'am, I, I have this soap to sell and we only sell it to beautiful women like you. All of a sudden he was selling soap at every door. Okay, that's how important <laughs> your message is. Yeah. That's how important we it is. only sell it to you, the beautiful women. Only to beautiful women. Because you've got it, like what we tell people when they're creating that snapshot of who that ideal customer is, the people who can hone in on that the best are the ones who are the most successful with it. Because you've got to create this picture in your mind of who you're talking to, because that's who you want to talk to in every message you put out. Yes. And, and it is critical. And it's, it's big. Like, like, like oh, I had this mentor when I was younger that would always say, look, when you dig in a hole, you get a shovel full and a little on the handle. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's a tiny, it's a little bit that makes a huge difference. Right. So you got to, when you're hitting that ideal customer, you know, a lot of people, uh, they'll support a baseball team. Right. And I saw this, I saw a thing the other day on, on, uh, on like, a, I think it was an auto parts store down in Biloxi, Mississippi, and it said, don't buy from Amazon, they won't support your kid's baseball team. And I thought that was great, right? <laughs> and so, it's so true, right? And But they do that, but then, you know, they don't take that any further. Like, their branding doesn't show up on uh, that baseball team, and their pride for supporting that baseball team doesn't show up on their social media. And they're not connecting with the moms on that group of the social media that are looking at the scoreboard that has their sign on it. You know what I mean? Like it's, you have to continue to look for the next thread, the next loop in that relationship building so you can be heard. Like it's the, that's the hardest part. Like we're all likable human beings, you know, people, we're, we're our biggest critic, right? But we all got friends and we've even got some family members that might like us, right? You know what I mean? Well, guess what? Those, those people will do business with us if we can develop those relationships with them. But we, we, our marketing stops at the point that, like you said, sales and closing ought to take over a little bit. And the only thing I would add in that is that relationship building. So you got to look for not just that whole shovel full, but look for that little bit on the handle also that, that, that makes a difference because I, I think that on that, that what's on that handle is what people actually notice. My dad, he owned a car lot and, and he would always make us, you know, clean the windows, especially in hundred degree days, right? Just earning our keep. And, but he would always like raise cane at us. And he's like, Hey, you, you got to clean the door jam. You got to clean the door jams. I'm like, why are we got to clean the door jams? He said, people don't notice that they notice it. And, it, and he was always right. Like clean the door jams. All of a sudden the, the, car, the car looks so much cleaner, you know, and then we just cleaned the door jams a little bit and got the, got the water spots off of it. I think those things are very important with people's marketing when they start to see that our ideal customers are within their purview, then they've got to start adding that little bit that makes the huge difference in how they build that relationship. Yeah. Yeah. And the cool thing is, is, you know, it, it, the messaging um, doesn't even necessarily have to go to the ideal client per se. It can go to the person that has their heart, right? Like what I mean by this is I know a realtor that um, we're in a mastermind together and she, she did you know, with her ideal client, they have kids, you know, it's very similar ideal client to mine. And so all her focus went to the kids, you know, right. Cause she knows that the kids have mom and dad's heart. So like when they close on a property, she's like, look, this is a, a scary time for your kids moving that they're moving from their safe place. This is uncertain. She's like, let's make this a, a, an experience and a memory they'll never forget. And the whole, the whole housewoman party is just a massive party for the kids. Like to just, you know, like a, a memory that the kid will never forget. And instead of doing, you know, uh, uh, gifts for like closing gifts and ongoing gifts for the parents, like it's, birthday cards and two dollar bills for the kids and and yep. but then all our video content it's just stuff to do for the kids you yeah. know she just connects with the kids and and you know when she went from like 36 deals a year as an individual agent before she this and like 12 months she was 100 plus deals a year you know right yep. by just that little tweak yeah right um and that's somebody that they're not going to forget they're not going to go do business with an eye buyer some discount agent you know right you know right. based on that so um you know, the next question that I have uh, for you is, is, you know, is, is an individual, like a, an agent that's working with buyers and sellers. Let's just say I've, I've got the brand, I've got all of that. But then when you start to create a team or maybe you evolve into, you know, a brokerage and, and it's like, okay, maybe I'm still working with buyers and sellers and I want to have, you know, that brand there. But then now I've got the brokerage, you know, element there. I mean, it, is it something that is going to be a totally different or is it just depend on the scenario situation? You know, and, and 
and I guess I'm really intrigued on like what you guys did with Michael's brand for the brokerage to help that really take off. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I'd love to answer that one <laughs> because, because a brokerage, uh, really as, as the, as the broker, you are the face of the brokerage, right? So what the brokerage stands for are the, uh, morals and ethics and business standards and practices and culture that you as the leader of the brokerage have put in place. So that personal brand is very critical to a broker as, as, as it is to every single agent underneath that broker. Right. But that's why it's critical because the business you've built is built because of you. It's not built just because it's a brick and mortar. It's, it's built upon your shoulders and you took the risks and you have the idea and thought process in mind with the culture you're building there. So that's an answer to, to one, one thing. The other thing might be, and maybe you didn't ask this specifically, but we do get this question. What about agents underneath a broker? How do you manage their own personal brand? Plus they've got to put the brokerage materials on their marketing stuff as well. And that one's actually pretty easy and all, amazing brokers that we know and all the super smart ones will say, Hey, I want my brokers to be super successful. And I know in order to get it to be successful, I've got to bring people on who have their own individual strengths. Mm -hmm. And by putting their own unique brands out there and touting those strengths and finding their people, they're going to bring more to the brokerage as a whole. And so that part's really easy. Everybody gets to have their own personal brand that sets them apart individually, but the agents underneath the broker also have to be compliant with the brokerage rules and respectful to the brokerage and carry that culture with what they want to do too. That's also why a personal brand is critical in helping you grow a brokerage because it helps you recruit people. They are looking, you're going to recruit your people and your ideal agents by putting out this brand that attracts the agents that you want to attract as well as the clients you want to attract. Yes, I don't know if I answered that fully for you, Josh, but. Yeah, um, I, I, she actually, when she came to, when we started working together, it was just that very point. Like, it, you know, I needed to, I, I had two agents. And so, I, you know, I was trying to build this brokerage. And, um, and so we, we knew that we would have to get the, my message out first and foremost. Plus, it was uh, personal branding inside that small town that I uh, launched our, and our headquarters is still there. It's still less than 10,000 people, but we are right up on the, on the outskirts of the, Atlanta proper, you know, where you got 13 metro counties and it's growing by 8,000 people a month. And, you know, and, and we're the next county to come in to be the 14th county in the metro and that sort of thing. So when putting that message out there of me, it became easier to, to set the acumen for the the brokerage and it did two things. The first thing is I'm not a competing broker, right? So I don't, I don't, I want to take all the leads and give them to agents. And I found early on, it, you can't always trust that they're going to value those leads the way you would attack those things. But I found that as we put our, my face on uh, the marketing and my face on the, on the website and uh, like my personal mantra, my uh, company mantra that was written by me, the videos that explain how I got to where I was and all of my, you know, my journey that got me to where I was at that certain time. I found that agents that I recruited took on that same persona and then added their own flavor to it. Right. And a lot, and we, we do get kickback. We have gotten kickbacks from some brokers, but, but very few really for as many clients as we have, they realize that if we can make these agents successful, then, then the rising tide rises all the ships, right? Yeah. And then the second thing it did for me was it, 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 it held my agents more accountable because I, I could tell them, look, my face is on this. So if you don't treat those clients right, if you don't build those relationships right, you know, when they come to me with a problem and they're like, oh, you know, I'm not going to get paid on this commission because the guy's claiming now he, I didn't do the work and stuff. I sit down with them. I'm like, well, did you do the work? Let's, let's, let's talk this out. <laughs> Do it the Michael Carr and Associates way, and uh, and we find that if that, that there might be a hiccup somewhere, but in all of my agents, I've been able to say this is the way I do it. This is what has gotten me to here, and they respect it. Uh, you know, they carry that message as the overall, and then they add their own flavor to that message. I hope that answers your question. And it, yeah, we've yeah, seen I, fantastic success because of it. You know? Yeah, I love it because then too, you know, it also gives. Like, let's just say I'm going to join your brokerage, you know, right? Because, I mean, it's real estate agents looking and most entrepreneurs, but it's like, 
like we like sales and, and business like we're not creatives in the most part you know right? like i can't draw a damn stick figure you know like i, I can't can like I, you know i can't i can't do anything creative you know right so um but i'm, I'm a good modeler you know right meaning all right if i see you know I'm the leader of my organization so you know if i see michael doing this and having these videos and then it's like, it gives me something to be able to replicate. Um, and then also, and this is something we haven't talked about yet, but uh, uh, you know, my mentor is always pushing of, okay, you got your ideal client, but then he calls, you gotta come up then with your PETA, your, your pain in the ass. Like, you got, yeah, who do you want to attract? Who do you want to repel? And, and okay, hey, some of those realtors that, that think about joining our brokerage, Michael, like that's not their speed, they're, they're fine, but good, get them out of there. You can't be all things to all people, you know, right? right. Um, you know, so, uh, it, you know, like you want to repel, you know, right? Uh, you know, with that. So I'm curious then, you know, with your guys' services, you know, we talked a lot about the process and the importance of this and the power that all of this can come together um, uh, for the connection with potential clients, clients, and, and, and just the, such a noisy world. We're sold 3,000 plus times a day, you know, right? So people got to see your same message so consistently, um, you know, but then when it comes specific to brand face, because again, it's, you get a real estate agent like me, it's like, dude, I'm not gonna, I don't know where to start with designing, you know, right? Um, I just need a, a great company to help me with all of this. So can you, can you walk us through like what, I mean, we talked about the ideal client in the heap, you know, right? But then like, can you just talk about the services and what all includes and, and all of that? So for those that are watching and listening that do want support with this, you know, they can have an, you know? Absolutely. So we accomplish seven different th things with agents as they go through our program. First one, once we get them defined, that's the defined phase. We, we figure out who their customer is, what the stands out about them, what that brand identifier is going to be that's going to kick off the brand. Then we get started. We get started with the real work. <laughs> we, first thing we do is develop their brand messaging. Uh, things like your elevator pitch, biography, your frequently asked questions, something we call signature sound bites, which are highlights of your brand at a glance. Everything that will allow you to communicate very clearly what it is that sets you apart. Then we move into choosing brand colors and a personal brand logo. Um, people don't realize a lot of times they can have their own personal brand logo, even if their brokerage has a logo on the materials as well. That's done all day long, every day. So they want that because that logo, their own logo gives them that definite, it elevates them in terms of professionalism and really pulls that brand uh, closer in. Then we look at imagery. Um, background images, a, col a small collection of images that represents that brand and what, what that agent stands for. Um, and then we take a look at the photos of that agent, not just a typical headshot, but getting a professional photo shoot. We actually have a stylist on staff that'll do a video chat with them, help them choose their wardrobe, help them to make sure that that wardrobe is something they feel comfortable and confident in and yet still expresses the image we want to portray. Then when we get those things together, those are the puzzle pieces, the branding elements that we will take from that point and we do all the fancy design and everything and put it together. So we then, when, once we take and display that brand across their everyday marketing platforms, again, we're talking about websites, social channels, and, co and major collateral pieces, we'll design all of that. So if their website um, has a web header, we'll design that. If not, we'll customize it as much as we can to make sure that that brand is infused throughout the site. On all their social channels, for those that are applicable, we, we do a Facebook cover photo, we create the uh, profile pics, we put all the brand messaging and fuse all of that in there and then we'll also design a business card a personalized note card something we call a spotlight sheet which is a one cheap pdf with five or six elements of their brand at a glance and so then they have a lot of materials there and here's the really cool part um, we also put together a brand asset library for them as they go throughout the program. So at the end of the program, they have access to every single thing we've created together from the messaging to all the graphic design. So from that point forward, if they decide they want to do a magazine ad or radio ad, a billboard, a postcard, whatever that is, they not only have every single piece and part to put into that piece of marketing, they also have the formula with which to do it based on how we've designed all the other pieces for it them so does that help yep yep love it so then do you so once it's on all the the places in design um um then from there it's just you know like let's just say somebody's has 
but with their social postings and you know different things like that you know is it um all right well here's how we're going to design your different like just kind of creating templates that they can continue to replicate and duplicate what you're teaching and then how to continue the process ongoing yeah okay good question so in addition to that throughout their time with us like every week for the people in our main program that most people take part in we do a group webinar every week and on those webinars we do a lot of training teaching them how to put their new brand to work once it's defined developed and displayed on their everyday platforms so we have training videos in there that teach them how to market to and against millennials um, how to uh, market on facebook in a different manner in order to get clients who are looking to buy or sell today to engage with you how to market yourself with your new brand on instagram how to build your email list how what to send to your email list is different from everybody else i mean the list goes on and on and on but we feel like it's not enough just to help them create this awesome brand now how do you use it yeah. differently differently so we have all of that in place as well yeah love it so then where do those that are watching listen that that are intrigued in this which i'm guessing is everybody because i know you know i'm definitely definitely extremely interested myself so where do you go to learn more about it pricing sign up all of that stuff yep well, um, number one, just to learn more about Brandface in general, go to brandfacerealestate.com. That's our main website. And then if you're interested in, uh, we just developed a new course called Real Estate Brand Builder. We're the only comprehensive brand building system across the globe. And we have the whole system in place in an online course as well. And so if people want to learn more about that, go to um, realestatebrandbuilder.com. So it's brandfacerealestate.com for the main site, realestatebrandbuilder.com for the brand builder course info. Awesome. And those watching, listen, to make it uh, extremely easy on you as always, wherever you're at watching, listen, whatever medium that you're on, we're going to have those right below to make it super easy on you so you can just click and go check those out. So, um, yeah, I mean, this, this has been awesome. I truly appreciate uh, you guys taking time out of a busy day to be here. And this has been a ton of great information, extremely valuable and stuff that, again, we just – I've never been to a conference or, or even worked with a coach in specific to real estate or read a book or that has these types of conversations. And, you know, sometimes we just need to take the time to slow down and do it right. So this has been amazing. And those watching and listening, I know ain't every podcast with this, but information without implementation is truly just the start of delusion. Information is a power. It's taking that information, taking massive action on it that allows you to create the power that gives you the power to allow you to create the life that you know you want and deserve. And Tanya and Michael shared so many amazing pieces of advice with you guys today. Take something that you learned, take massive action on it. So again, you can create the life that you know you want and deserve. And again, the links will be right below wherever you're at, will be below right here. So you can go check more out about the online course, about the services, all of that fun stuff. And again, Tanya and Michael, this has been a massive honor. Truly appreciate you taking time. I are busy to be here. Hey, thank uh, you so much. The Josh. honor is ours. It thank is. you so much, Josh. Yeah, 100%. All right, you guys. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Peace.